This video shows you the secrets to the Golden State Warriors domination. Steph Curry's MVP-esque season, Draymond Green's DPOI impact, which can be talked about in separate videos, even the development of Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins, are well-known facets to the Warriors' assembly of talent. While Chris Chioza, Kevon Looney, and Juan Toscano Anderson don't have the flashiest points per game average, they do all the little things that contribute to winning basketball. Here's a breakdown of how the Warriors' advanced offensive sets, featuring heavily under-the-radar players, have caused frustration for their opponents, and stay tuned to see the most underrated Warrior, in my opinion, at the end. Before continuing, only 19.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're looking for dope NBA content like this, help the channel reach 50k by subscribing if you haven't already. Also, leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. We'll get to the advanced action offensively that this Warriors team is running, which has led to their 17-2 start, but first I want to talk about the many layers to this Golden State Warriors attack. We're going to leave off Clay Thompson. You can check out some recent analysis on Clay by checking out this video right here. I'll leave a link in the description. The first, most widely known and important layer to this current Warriors team is their big four of Steph, Draymond, Poole, and Wiggins. The second layer to this team are the most widely known role players, off-season pickups like Otto Porter Jr., Nemanja Bialica, and Andre Iguodala. And Damian Lee plus Gary Payton II have also been on opposing team scouting reports, and the media and fans know they are big pieces to this team's depth. Meanwhile, the three players on today's thumbnail and point guard Chris Chioza, the dub's completely underrated center with 99 overall rated hands, Gavon Looney, and the hustle-based versatility from Juan Toscano Anderson, complete the third layer to this Warriors team, players who fail to get the respect they deserve. Leading off with the bearded Curry, Chris Chioza, who turned 26 years old on Sunday, November 21st, and the Warriors gave him the best present of all, playing time. The undrafted guard out of Florida played a season-high 20 minutes. The last time he played as much was March 24th, 2021 with the Brooklyn Nets. The backup guard made quick decisions offensively and used his swift first step to veer into the paint often. When the ball swung to him on the perimeter, he was ready to shoot. He hit two of his six three-point attempts. Chioza finished with 11 points on four for nine shooting. Most importantly, he didn't commit a turnover until garbage time. Chioza is only going to be in the Warriors' rotation if things go very, very south, but having a backup in case of emergency point guard who can serviceably run offense, take care of the ball, and create shots is quite a luxury. Curry, unsurprisingly, ranks the highest under 538.com's Raptor rating system with a plus 7.6 offensive plus minus. What's surprising, though, is that Otto Porter Jr., Gary Payton II, and the emergency backup PG, Chris Chioza, are the only other Warrior players with a positive offensive Raptor. Chioza spent a full four years playing for the Florida Gators, even playing under current Bulls head coach Billy Donovan in his freshman year. Chris would then advance from the college level to the G League, playing for the Capital City Go-Go and Long Island Nets between the pros, which went on through his first four years. Finally, late in his fourth career season in Brooklyn, Chioza broke out into the Nets rotation, playing 10.5 minutes on average over 22 outings and posting three assists per game. Before getting into the next two players who make up the third layer to this Warriors team, first we're going to go over how the Warriors are executing brilliant offensive sets in the half court. 80 to 90% of NBA teams tend to have predictable offensive sets using a plethora of high pick and rolls in a spread offense, or the so commonly used horn sets. But when you watch most teams, you can tell they don't even make it past the first progression or option once it's been shut down. The possession often stagnates into an isolation contest, where a team's best shot maker is counted on to self-create. Conversely, Golden State's offense isn't what you would consider limited in that sense. Of course, top-notch high IQ defensive players and game plans can keep it under wraps, through an abundance of switching and belligerent coverages like hedging, blitzing, or trapping. However, even those strategies often can't slow down Golden State's smooth ball movement, Coach Steve Kerr's personnel movement, and the overwhelming amount of plays within plays that are nearly impossible to keep track of. 
there's a good reason for the Warriors, after a dominant 118-103 win over the Portland Trailblazers, are currently the second best offense in the NBA with a 113.4 offensive rating. The Dubs' sets and constant flow isn't only mesmerizing to watch, but more importantly, they execute perfectly. The first set which we'll break down that Golden State utilizes quite often is the modified split action. A typical low post split action features an entry pass to the low post, and then the passer sets a down screen for a shooter who aims to generate an open three, especially against defenses with dropping bigs. But the modified version of this low post split action adds the element of a screen for a dive cutter, which makes it 10 times more difficult to defend. Starting out with a handoff from the wing, followed by a reversal to the weak side wing, the ball is then fed to the post, the two players involved in the initial handoff then initiate screening action, one sets the screen for the other to curl and dive inside. If the dive cut isn't open, the natural progression is the classic split action maneuver, a down screen for a shooter to get open for a three. The play is the most efficient of all the Warrior sets. It has an off-ball down screen element where the Warriors 1.18 points per possession on such plays is the NBA's best. The dive cut option and potential slip of the down screen are examples of the Warriors 1.3 points per possession on cuts, number 7 in the NBA according to Synergy. Next, the horns formation is a fairly common configuration in the NBA widely used by a majority of teams, including the Warriors. It features two players at the elbows, two stationed in each corner, and a ball handler up top. This formation gives way to a wide range of actions to be run, screening at the elbows, handoff actions, or even something as basic as double-sided high pick and rolls. With Curry on the floor, Golden State uses horns to run flex action, which involves screening for someone in the corner, called a flex screen, before running a down screen. On this play right here, you can hear Kerr clearly call out the play flex flex, complete with a bicep flex. The next set we'll break down is the Iverson cut into a rip screen, which can get Golden State open dunks at the rim. The Warriors brought out a play they heavily ran for Kelly Oubre Jr. last season, running it after a timeout during the third quarter against Portland. Initiated by an Iverson cut, the rock is then dished to the elbow. Then, Steph sets a back screen for the player on the opposite elbow, usually a lengthy lob threat that creates an alley-oop opportunity. And this is where the all-time great shooting of Steph really comes into play, because this action banks heavily on Curry's man sticking to him instead of switching onto the cutting lob threat. Defenders usually come in with a stick to Curry at all times mindset on off-ball screens that are set for Curry and those that are set by Curry. As a result, no one is left to pick up the cutter off the back screen and a perfectly placed lob by Draymond Green finds its mark. Curry's willingness to set screens have made most of these sets possible, and the example he sets is trickling down to his teammates, who are encouraged by their leader's dedication and willingness to become a cog, albeit the most important one in a well-oiled machine. As you can see, the Warriors' offense is humming, and their play calling has arguably been at its best since the dynasty years. While Curry and Green get all the attention for executing the plays which they should, the Warriors' coaching staff, with a former man in charge, Mike Brown, as the assistant, and of course, the former Coach of the Year, Steve Kerr, leading the way, they deserve more credit for the dub success. I talked about Juan Toscano Anderson yesterday, but in his last two games versus the Sixers and Blazers, JTA's shooting 9 of 14 from the fields with 7 assists and 14 rebounds total. Since having his minutes regressed early on, the last five outings have seen Juan get 37 minutes against Detroit, 25 against Philadelphia, and 23 last night against Portland. For an in-depth breakdown on the Mexican-American phenom, go watch my video from yesterday. Now for the most underrated warrior, by far in my opinion, Kevon Looney. He's been the dub's most reliable center ever since the mid-2010s, where the Warriors would end up reaching the finals in five straight years. Maybe he's the starting center, but Looney seems to get significantly less attention for the dub's success than most of the team's bench players. Kevon catches about every single pass, whether it's heavily draped in traffic or not, and those hands help him out on the glass. In total contested offensive rebounds, Looney ranks number 25, 
just behind reputable big men like Nikola Jokic and Bam Adebayo. He saves possessions on a nightly basis, really a quarterly basis for the dubs, and receives little to no credit for it. Who's the biggest unsung hero on this Warriors team? Best answer gets next video's comments or shout out. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Community Speaks winner is Jared Malazzo, who says the most underrated thing about this team is the chemistry. Warriors got a ton of new people this year from free agency, and they're already flowing like they've been playing for years. Pause to read the rest of Jared's answer. Thanks for every great take. This was D-Flow. Hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.